Hi everyone, my name is Richard and I am a Brit who has become slightly obsessed with Norway. Or should I say, hey, Allah Salman. I apologise. Um, so today we're taking a look at the um, rather interesting uh, Svalbard Seed Vault. Now this came up in a video that I reacted to last time. And I'd never heard of this Seed Vault. Um, so... I thought I'd react to a video on it. Uh, now, you guys did suggest we do this video by... I can't see who it's by now. Um, but the link to the original video is below. And uh, please go and subscribe and like and watch it on there if you want an uninterrupted version. So we're just going to take a look at this and I'm going to find out everything there is to know, hopefully. Uh, this is quite an old video. I think this is about nine years old. Um, so this is Inside the Svalbard Seed Vault. If you like the video, you can like this video, please, and subscribe if you want to. Let's crack on. Let's find out what, what this is all about. So this is like the world's most important freezer. It is, really. <laughs> <laughs> the most important room in the world, someone has said. These are pretty big claims for a place located just 1,300 kilometers or 800 miles from the North Pole. But then, this is no ordinary place. It's the Svalbard Global Seed Vault. Holy well. well, actually, this, this is just its front door. Inside the seed vault are a series of tunnels. It's not actually that cold right here, but as we go deeper, it is only going to get colder. This is Bente. You're an engineer, Bente? Yes, I am. You're going to show us where to go? <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> How many doors are there? Uh, one, two, three. Well, five doors until we are into uh, the secret room. Five doors to the secret room. Whoa, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> These are the lengths of tunnel that take you down into the seed vault. So, I, I mean, I mean, the video might be great after, but this is a hard watch to start with. The camera angles and shakings all over the place. So, uh, apologise if you're if you're struggling to watch this as well. Uh, hopefully it settles out when he's actually down into the uh, tunnels here. This facility was built to last around 200 years and withstand earthquakes and explosions. It was placed on the side of a mountain, so even if all the ice on Earth melts, it will still be above sea level. Ah, that makes There sense. are three separate vault rooms where seeds are stored, but only one of them is in use right now, and it's buried over 120 meters from the front door. The whole point of putting the vault so deep in this mountain is to put it within permafrost. So all around me, the earth naturally stays around minus four or minus five all year round. And that way, if something did happen and the coolant stopped flowing here, there was no power, then, well, behind these doors, <laughs> they would still remain probably. They look cold. <laughs> Um, now, we've got lots of questions. I don't know if they're going to answer them in the video. So I don't want to just ask loads of questions and then have him answer them anyway. But, of course, funding comes into this. Who's funding this? How long has it taken to build? Uh, which countries were involved? All those types of things I'm thinking of here. Uh, so we'll, I'm, hopefully he'll find out. But it's only a nine-minute video, so let's see. You know, minus four or minus five Celsius forever. Assuming, of course, global temperatures don't rise that much. This place is sometimes called the Doomsday Vault because even in a worst case scenario, it should preserve the diversity now of the world's food crops. Really in the mountain, surrounded by permafrost. And uh, here is a cross tunnel that leads to three vault doors. Vault number one is up there, vault number two, and this is the one that's actually being used. And then vault number three. It's pretty amazing to look up and see ice-covered ceilings and walls everywhere. The Svalbard Global Seed Vault works essentially like a bank vault. It's, yeah, it's it almost is. yeah, because uh, the seeds lay in uh, boxes like this. These boxes are sealed when they come to Svalbard, and, and none of us are, uh, can open it. We, uh, we put it to the security system at the airport just to check that it isn't any explosives or, or anything in it, but it's work, it works like a bank box. So we, can, we can't open the, this. Only the depositor can open and take out their seeds. So you don't open any of the seeds, any of the boxes that no, come here? No, no. 
Well, how do you know that people are really depositing the seeds like barley that they say they are and not other things? Uh, just because they have signed a contract that says it. So <laughs> we, we, can, we can't uh, be sure, but of course we trust them. Would there be... Uh, a... I mean, that'd be a weird thing to lie about, wouldn't it? If you're committing to sending in barley, I, I don't know what benefit there is to uh, to not do that. I mean... <laughs> Okay. Seeds for some crops that people might consider illicit, like marijuana. That is said that that shall, shall not be in here. No, uh, no drugs and also no gene modified material. No mm. genetically modified seeds go in here. Yeah, Norway has asked for that. No, not uh, genetical material is uh, kept in here. Are there any particularly strange crops? Has anyone deposited anything that's really odd or weird? Uh, no, nothing weird is uh, is in here. But we have uh, we have we get some questions from people who want to put in their own uh, private seeds. I all private seeds. Okay, we're just gonna carry. On. Also, have had had letters from men wanting to put their gene material in here. <laughs> that is really strange, and and we don't answer those. This is the door to the vault, and behind here, there are nearly a million different varieties of seeds from all over the world, kept at minus 18 degrees Celsius. <laughs> you know how I can tell that it's minus 18 degrees in here? You can Because there's a thermometer on the wall. Actually feel the moisture in your nose freeze, so your nostrils get all stiff. Yeah, and I see behind you we have some Canadian seeds, which is exciting yeah. for me because I am Canadian. So what sort of things do we have from Canada? I'm really not, not sure because uh, this box uh, on the outside doesn't tell what is in it. But uh, these, these numbers here uh, are connected to a database on the internet, so you can... Now, of course, that is a concern if all the barcodes are linked to a database, because... If it's the end of the world, uh, I'm going to assume the internet's gone down. Uh, so having a barcode and a database for the stuff is completely useless to you. So I'm hoping they've got some sort of backup physical version of this. Go in there afterwards. There you go. Yeah, and we can go you can find see. out. Then you can find out what has Canada got stored yes. in the seed vault. What are we looking at right here? Yeah, it's like a bank vault except. Everything that you've put in there is publicly available. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> These are the coolest boxes, I think. They are from North Korea. Oh handmade, my goodness. Handmade boxes. They really look nice. like they come from the 1960s or yeah. something. Do you think? <laughs> yeah, they do. They have been. They uh, built them made, specially. Yeah, they, they built them specially because they got the measurements of how big should the boxes be. And these are, are built exactly on those measurements. And here you see North Korea is placed on the same shelves as the U uh, USA. It's just on the back there. Oh, it's on the back side. Yeah. And you have South Korea just on the back. So here they are like in uh, small United Nations deep in the mountains of Svalbard. <laughs> now, I wonder if they're stored in any particular order. Are they stored in... Because if you don't know what they are, I find it's very odd. Are they stored per seed type, country type? Is everybody invited to send their own seeds in? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so these are the last few bare shelves in Vault 2. Once the other two vaults are full, there will be around 3 million different species of plants stored here, with over 500 seeds per sample. So one day there may be over a billion seeds stored inside this mountain, representing the vast majority of Earth's agricultural diversity. And you don't know today what kind of of, of seeds that you can grow in 20, 30, 40 years from now because of the climate change. Perhaps you, you have to use an, another type of, of seed uh, 30 years from now that can handle warmer climate, drier climate, wetter climate, whatever yeah. is going to, to happen. So, so that is why it's uh, so important to have a backup of all these seeds so that you are sure that you can also grow the food we need in for the next generations to come. But this isn't the only seed bank on Earth. No. There are around 1,700 other gene banks around the world run by different countries and organizations. And at a cost of $9 million to build the Svalbard Seed Vault and millions more to run it... it Do you know what? It's not actually as much as I thought. $9 million. That's, that's nowhere near as much as I thought it was going to be.
It's worth asking whether this is a costly redundancy or a valuable insurance policy. And perhaps the best people to answer this question are the Syrians, who last year were the first to make a withdrawal from the seed vault. Oh. The gene bank in Aleppo in Syria is now out of order. It's been bombed. So uh, one third of the material that is kept uh, in here is now uh, taken down to Morocco and, uh, and Lebanon. Hmm. And this is some of the material that now has been returned. So to get uh, the material going again. That's why there's so this... That's why, why it's empty. Will those seeds actually be used to grow crops? Yeah, like... they will, yeah. Over the last 13,000 years, we have cultivated millions of species of plants. The agricultural revolution underpinned the technological and population explosions that made our modern lives possible. The risk of a real doomsday scenario is incredibly remote. But whatever happens, thanks to this outpost at the top of the world, at least our seeds are safe. Hey, I'm currently on a train traveling from Washington, D.C. to New York. Okay, um... Now that's a shame. I think again, see that video. It was cool, but there was nowhere near enough information for me. I want to. I want to know. Like I said, the questions about what happens when. So when something goes wrong, who comes up here to deal with this? What seeds are the most popular ones that we keeping? How many are we keeping of each type? Who runs the whole thing? I've got loads of questions. The, this felt like a little teaser. Um, nowhere near enough information for me. Um, so. If you have a better um, seed vault video, please can you link it below because I want to learn more. I think this is fascinating. I love love this idea. Um, so please link below if you've got a better video. I want more. I want more. I, I don't. If it's a half an hour video, it's a. I don't mind. It's fine. I mean, you're the ones who are going to have to watch me watch a half an hour video, which will turn it to 40, 45 minutes. But you get the point. I just want to learn. So if you've got a better video, please link it below. Uh, it was cool little introduction, but yeah, nowhere near enough information for me. But yeah, hey, cool. It's a cool idea and I want to learn more. So if you like this video, don't forget to like it. If you didn't, then you've watched to the end anyway. But So thank you. And um, the next video might be a little bit longer because I'm about to go traveling for three weeks across Europe. So uh, not to Norway this time. That's next year. Um, but we're about to drive across Europe to Latvia. So that's going to be an adventure. But I'll try and keep you updated, and thank you for watching. Uh, I'll, I may be trying to sneak another video out, but we'll see. If not, I'll see you in September. Thanks, everybody. Goodbye.